about 40, 50 miles an hour straight to the Bahamas. We'll be there an hour and 10 minutes. Eight miles later, here we are pulling into Old Bahama Bay. This is where we're gonna check in our hotel. We're gonna be our home base before we head out for the afternoon tuna bite. Check in customs, immigration. Hour and 10 minute ride, $2,000 worth of fuel. <laughs> and we're here. <laughs> Wait a minute, your but wife's honey, I'm home. <laughs> your wife's watching, about $400 in fuel. <laughs> Thank you for the correction. Ow, you mother <laughs> Oh, the old trick camera. <laughs> <laughs> I'm work with a bunch of <laughs> <laughs> All right, so basically here's what we're gonna do. Right now we're gonna get all the baits ready. We have a, a chunk box that we had made. Basically what we're doing is chunking the sardines into one inch chunks. Chunkomatic 3000. We'll do a whole flat, which is a, about a 25 pound box. We're gonna head out, try to find some weed, see if we can pick up some dolphin on the way to the tuna grounds. But we're gonna look for bait, birds, set our radar, see if we can find the birds. Once we find the birds, Let's see if we can pick them up on a depth finder. If we can pick up some schools on a depth finder when we circle them, you know, other than skipjacks or, you know, blackfin, then we'll go ahead and start chunking. One of the most important things is reading the fish and the birds. That's a key point to this. Loose cannon's gonna strike again. There you go, there you go, here they are, here they are. We find the birds on the radar here. We're looking for a tight group of birds. Once we find a tight group, we're basically just trying to figure out which direction they're going, also playing a role in the current. Find the right flock of birds, we'll come up on them and use a depth finder. And if we can mark them on depth finder, depending on what color the, the marks are, we can determine how dense the marks to figure out what kind of fish they are. If they're light green, we can tell that they're a little bit smaller fish, less dense, and they're moving around pretty quickly. If it comes red or yellow, we know it's pretty dense, it's a thick fish. We're in them now and they're birds around everywhere and hopefully Mike over here catches a fish or Manny. These right here might be blackfin, that's what it looks like. They're kind of, they're lighter in color on the marks. But we're looking for the red ones and hopefully they'll be here along with the blackfin. Just wait for them to come up. Once they hit, it's game on. Yeah, that's a good one here. all underneath the boat. Picking them up all under the depth finder between 50 and 100 feet. Go to the back, go to the back, go to the back. Go to the back, he's going behind the boat. Get it up, get it up, get it up. Go, go, go. Get it up, get it up, get it up. Go, 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 go to the back. Keep chunking, keep chunking, keep chunking. Keep chunking. Keep chunking. You got one too, you got one too, you got one too. He's yeah. got a nice fish. Hey, you can put it in a rod holder if you want. Oh! oh. You suck. You did everything right, Manny, except catch him. Such a disappointment, bro. Either you're just real tired or you just need to go to the gym. <laughs> There's this guy, Howard, that decided that He's gonna take every bit of knowledge that I could possibly teach him, show up on the boat, take the numbers, end up exactly where we're gonna be, within a couple hundred yards, in his own boat, with his own team now. So we're gonna teach him a little lesson. He said he was running a little low on bait. We're gonna see if we can help him out, help him out with a little bait on the way by. And we're gonna do it at about 40 miles an hour. Go by with a bunch of idiots on it. 
Whale shark, whale shark, right here, port side. Freaking whale shark right by the boat. He is massive. Mike's gonna jump in. We're out here for this is this is what we do. I love it. We're in the Northwest Providence Channel off the coast of Lakaya doing our tuna thing, looking for tunas. Just caught a bunch of dolphin, and then here comes a whale shark popping up. You gotta love it. Over here in the Bahamas, you never know what you're gonna see. He just bumped the boat. <laughs> Now he's gone. He gone. <laughs> that was absolutely amazing. Out of 35 years I've been on this earth, that is probably the coolest thing I've ever seen. And to be able to have the guys jump in the water and be able to swim with them, that's just, that's an awesome experience. Absolutely overwhelming, especially when you're in a 40 foot boat and the thing is at least as long as the boat. What an experience, I mean that's like, once in a lifetime opportunity, you know, we're just out here dolphin fishing and this whale shark's there, just jump in, grab a mask, jump in, get some shots. That was killer, you know, you gotta capitalize on an experience when it comes up, you know, we're all fishing freaks and we're catching dolphin and going crazy, getting geared up to go look for tuna birds in the evening here. Got a bunch of dolphin there next to the boat, we're all bailing dolphin, go crazy. Next thing you know, Joe looks over and says, oh, what is that thing, big thing coming at us? It turns out it's a whale shark. And I didn't even have my dive gear up. I had it down in the, in the cab and I pulled stuff up, breaking masks and oh, it was a melee. But uh, what an awesome experience, getting a chance to jump in with that whale shark. Gotta love it, totally docile animals, just cruising around, plankton eaters. So, you know, there's no big deal. They're not gonna hurt you, but what a cool experience. Their body, it feels like velvet. You touch them, it's just like, it's just like velvet. A little sketchy at first, but it was just really calm and docile, man. It was. It was definitely well worth jumping in for sure. The Bahamas, never know what you're gonna find. 60 short miles away from Florida, and you're in another country seeing all kinds of cool fish. Gotta come check it out. The Bahamas, it's a better way of life. Did you mate with the shark? I tried to. Shark transfer. I tried to mate with its blowhole. <laughs> and, uh, it's not a mammal. It oh, doesn't have a blowhole. No, no wonder it was just bouncing off. <laughs> Right and early this morning, heading out of Pelican Bay, and we're gonna first see if we can find some weed, maybe pick up some dolphin. On the way out, if we see some birds, maybe we'll start chunking, see if we can pick up some yelp and tuna. And then uh, I think we're gonna go to the other side of the bank and hit some deep drop, do some bottom fishing. And then in the evening time, we'll hit the canyons again, see if we can pick up some more yellowfin. Just because you're yeah, chunking don't mean you're just going to get a tuna, though. It's like a small sail. I'll aim for anything with a tail. Hey, Howard. What are we doing? 
We're deep dropping. Oh, you don't mind if we just sit next to you? Mind if I just tie up to the side of you? Not at all. If it's, I don't know if that's very good for television. <laughs> just throw out the bumpers, buddy. I'll tie right up to you. You go off one side, I'll go off the other. No, well, I don't know what the current's going to do, but just the general area, as you go back north, it'll roll off from like 810 to 825. And you'll, you just want to drift across it, and then you should get bites. Go do some deep drop. Get us some queens, some big groupers, yellow eyes. Our first drop, and we got one on. This is the exciting part. How many people does it take to reel in one pole? It's almost like working for the county. Right. You know? That eight supervisors and one guy working. And that one guy working really isn't really working. No, no. Somebody rub my shoulders. Thank you. Great job, Anthony. Thank you. I'm proud of you, buddy. Yellow eye. You know you got five or six hooks on that rig. Listen here, Howard. Is that sort of like when you have four poles in the water and a bunch of chunks and you can't get a tune in the boat? Now I know the feeling. This is not exciting at all. Groupa. Hey, it's Marty Feldman. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I don't really do much, to be honest with you. It kind of just hits the bottom, and before you know it, they're just on. You just hit the button. Who's up now? Who's top cop now? You got something stuck in your tooth. <laughs> There's a better one on the bottom there. I think we're just going to take a nap. Mm -hmm. Yep, we're out here 30 miles off, 35 miles, 45 miles, somewhere out here. We're in a boat, we're floating. We're just catching fish. What a zoo. But the fish is in the boat, that's what matters. Oh, there we go. All right, mate. You got a yellowfin. Here it is. Oh, yeah. Hold on, stop right there. Hold on. Loose cannons. Tuna extravaganza. That's how we do it here on a loose cannon. I'm gonna bring them right to you, nice and easy. That a baby! Roll on the right of way as fishing boat has the right of way. I don't care how big your bow is, we ain't moving. We'll see if they follow the rules out in the ocean off the Bahamas. I would bet he had no intentions on moving. The frigate right here. There's the marks, there's the marks there. There's the marks. Get one line in until we stop and then someone else. Go. Go, 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 go. That's what I'm looking for right there. That's a great mark at 150. Just try to keep them about 75 feet apart from each other. One piece. Yep. Come tight, there come tight. Go. There you go. All right, let it go. On, let him run, let him run. Two on, two on, two on. Two on. on. We got two. Nice fish. Yeah, baby. Nice off. fish. There you go. Now we're talking, boys. Better reel. That's a nice fish. That's a nice fish. Don't try to reel. 
That's what I'm talking about. Oh my god. No, it's fine. Let it go. Let it don't try to reel. He's fine. Don't do that. Don't try to reel. Got like 600 yards. Trying to tell you. I got a long way to go, fellas. Go real, 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 real. That's a Conley rod. Right. That thing is bad to the bone. Hey, that's a nice fish. Yeah, it is. Hey, somebody quick, make me a sandwich. Hey, dude, that's a 70 plus pound fish. You can tell by those, dude, that pole is bent or over. That is hurled over. There's a shark down there because they all disappeared. Just telling you. You might want to take that out of the rod holder and fight it like a man instead of a little girl. Just saying. I see color. Oh, a shark right there. Get it up. Get it up. Get it up. There's a shark right there. I see him. Hurry up. Get him up. Get him up. Get him up. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Watch the, get the rod out of the holder. Oh, oh, sh Get the rod out of the holder. Get him, get him, get him, get him, get him. There's no organized chaos here. It's, there's nothing organized about it. It's just straight chaos. These guys are everywhere. I got one spraying water, one making a freaking mess. The other guy asking if he wants to move. We're catching fish. Get oh, you yeah, some, baby. Yeah. Yeah. Woo! Yeah. Woo! Yeah. Yeah, buddy. There's a 65 foot, $4 million Viking over there. And they have not yet caught a fish. You know why? Because they ain't on the loose cannon.